Turn your designs into profit with Printful. Place them on any of our products and sell them on the world's most popular online marketplaces and platforms. While we do the rest. As you sit back and enjoy running your new business, we take care of fulfillment, packing, and shipping. Easy as that. Get started with Printful today.
Hi, everyone. Welcome to Printful Threads Volume 2. To those of you who are just tuning in for the first time wondering where on earth you are, this is Printful Threads, Printful's very own online conference series. Uh, to those of you who joined us for Pr Printful Threads Volume 1 in early May, welcome back. My name is Marianne. I'm part of the Printful team, and I will be your host for today and the upcoming two days, so you'll be seeing quite a bit of my face. Um, well, when we made the last Printful Threads, which was, as I said, in early May. Um, the world had been freshly hurled into very challenging times indeed to the COVID-19 pandemic. And well, we're still dealing with some of the consequences. So as you know, almost every part of the world, every field was affected from e-commerce to, well, everything else really, Printful included. And that's why in May, we devoted that Printful Threads to the hot topic of the hour, which was um, what e-commerce businesses, suppliers, and everybody else was doing to navigate those stormy seas. Well, the world's a much different place now, and some of those changes are already in place. Some changes are still to come, but the most important thing is that we're happy to be here. We're happy that you are here and we're grateful for all your support throughout. Um, we're happy to say that Printful is almost back to normal, also through very much through your, your support through this challenging time, and we're determined to keep going no matter what. And as always, we strongly encourage you to check up on things on how Printful is doing by going to printful.com slash COVID-19. But well, that's the past, and now we're looking towards the future, and that's where the this lineup of this edition of Printful Threads comes in, and it's dedicated to what lies ahead, the holiday season, which is the biggest thing for all retailers, brick and mortar, e-commerce, what have you. And as you may have seen, we have aptly titled this Printful Threads, Marketing Crash Course for E-commerce Stores. And so basically with all this, we want to give you as much advice as possible before Thanksgiving hits. And um, just like in the last conference, we've got an amazing lineup of speakers for you, all experts in the field of e-commerce and well beyond. But what's different from last time, as you may have already noticed, is that we have split this conference into three days. So each day there are going to be three speakers. After all of these three speakers, there's going to be an individual Q&A session at the end. And a quick heads up that before the third speaker of every day, there's going to be a short five minute break so that I and the team and everybody else can catch their breath a little. Hope you don't mind. So yeah, three days, three speakers and three themes per day. And these are the topics that we're going to cover. So today, day one is going to be all about picking your audience and creating your first marketing strategy. Tomorrow is going to be dedicated to exploring the most effective marketing strategies out there. And we're going to finish off day three with scaling your business and creating meaningful campaigns. Looks pretty good, right? And uh, here's what I have for you today. Uh, we got three fantastic speakers. We've got Mark and Asaf and Kaylee, who are all backstage, so to speak, getting ready uh, to share their stories. And this is what they're going to share with us. Um, Mark is going to talk about, well, most of them are going to talk about niches, the topic of niches, which is a very, very important thing for business indeed. So Mark is going to talk about how niche can, in fact, one go. After that, Asaf is going to take over talking about how to sell to people who have never heard about you. Pretty important, right? And then Kaylee is going to finish off, once again, after the break, with um, how to find your niche in the wild, wild west of e-commerce. And after that, of course, we're going to wrap up with a Q&A. So can't wait to get all of this started. But before we get into it, I wanted to tell what you guys can do to engage with us, how you can share your questions and things like that. And speaking of, well, these things like that, a cool thing that we have this time is a contest. We're going to have a bit of a contest through, throughout the event. So every day of the conference, uh, we're going to draw five lucky winners who are going to win a $10 Printful coupon you can use on our site to order cool custom swag of your choice. So that's going to be three days, um, five winners each day. So that's 15 winners in total. And to take part in this contest, all you have to do is post a learning or takeaway um, from the conference, of course, on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, or a public Facebook page. Now note, it's a public Facebook page, not a private Facebook profile. So be careful there. But anyway, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, add the hashtag Printful Threads to your learning and um, you're in the lottery. You can do this un until September 4th, midnight. That's midnight Eastern time. And uh, yeah, we'll randomly draw the lucky five every day and we'll get in touch with the winner winners individually. Um, but we want to hear from you, from you and not just through the contest. And remember that you can engage with us through the platform of, well, wherever you're watching this. So just 
leave your comments, leave your questions. And if you have a question for a speaker, please make sure to leave the name of the speaker so we know which question is meant for whom when we get to that Q&A round at the end of today. Um, and if you're watching us through the Printful Threads landing page and you want to leave a comment, um, make sure to switch to YouTube and that's where you'll be able to leave the comment. So there you have it. I think we're all good to go and I didn't leave anything out. I hope you have your drinks ready, you have some snacks ready, and let's give a warm virtual welcome to our first speaker, Mark. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to have so you here. Me. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Before getting started with your presentation, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? How did you end up here? So I host the podcast Breakthrough Success. It's a podcast where we talk about personal and professional development. How do we grow our businesses? And then also the personal development side, because you want to take action on the stuff that you learn. So Breakthrough Success, that is my show. And that is through a lot of interviewing of guests, how I did end up being able to get speaking gigs like this one. So I do help people with their businesses and my presentation, how niche can you go? Uh, we will be jumping into all of that for people wondering like, how niche can you go? Awesome, can't wait, get right into it. All right, so, is, are the slides showing up just so I want to make sure they're... Oh, there we go. Okay. How niche can you go? And when it comes to all these different topics, all these different ideas, it can feel like there are some obscure ideas or some ideas that don't necessarily have as much potential to gain a following. But I do believe that based on all the new capabilities we have, it is possible for any idea to gain traction. It could be anything from using a podcast to get your word out, using social media. We have a variety of resources to build our audience and get our message out. And I do believe that we could go super niche. And one of the things that I see a lot of people do very often is they try it for a few weeks and then they say, oh, I picked something that was too niche and that's why... I'm not taking off the way I thought I would. So it's like the get out of jail free card with the idea of being too niche. And with this idea, it's important to challenge yourself to think in the long term. Think six months before you look at results and see what's going on and keep building up the momentum along the way. One thing that's going to help a lot is if you have role models. And for your niche, just do some Googling. Find people who talk about that niche. And if there aren't too many people because it's a small topic, that gives you an opportunity to stand out. And role models, they could be successful not just in your niche, but in another small niche. And you want to see what they are doing to grow their audiences. Are they super active on YouTube? Are they spreading out on a variety of social networks? But one thing about role models is you want to know who the role model is. You want to have a deeper idea of that person and what they've done. A lot of people, they look to their friends as role models, but they may not understand your niche. And if they don't understand it, they may think it's too small. So now we're going to go into a few examples of people who are in relatively small niches who were able to make a lot of income through their brands. The first person is Jody Carlson. She makes $7,000 a month from a Girl Scouts blog. And Girl Scouts, I mean, you can't like guys, like you automatically eliminate a good chunk of potential audience. It also has to be Girl Scouts. So it's very niche. And one of the reasons that Jody does pretty well is because if you are a Girl Scout or you are the parent of a Girl Scout, this is a very specific block that specifically caters to your needs. There are a lot of people who they just go too broad and then people don't know how specifically you serve them. Like finance is a very broad topic, but then are you in stocks or real estate? Are you in uh, stocks? Are you in like options or 
Are you in dividend investing or growth investing? The more specific you get, you do get a lot of people who it doesn't make sense for them to be in your audience, but you do get those few people who could be very engaged. Another example is Erin Chase. She has the $5 dinner blog and it combines to pretty broad niches and it creates a smaller niche. So you have the like save money niche, but you also put it in with food. So one of the options you can have is maybe you're juggling different niches and you aren't sure which one to pursue. Why not put some of those niches together to be a differentiator in the space rather than just leaning one way or the other. And since she is in a very small niche, the people in her audience, they don't have as many options. So it is good to get small niche. Earlier, I did talk about stocks and all the different options uh, that you could explore for a niche, but also real estate. One person I know, Mark Podolsky, he's the land geek and he specializes in buying and selling land. It's a type of real estate investment that not a lot of people do. And some people may argue that, oh, it's a little bit too niche. Like, why don't you just stick with something super broad like real estate? But since there aren't as many people talking about this topic, it does create the opportunity for him to stand out the way he has and be one of these few people who focuses on the land side of real estate. So with any niche, there are a few important questions that you have to ask yourself before you decide which ones you want to pursue. The first one is, can you stay in this business for a decade? Because earlier I talked about the get out of jail free card. A lot of people, they'll take a few weeks they won't get traction and then they'll think that their niche is too small, but you have to be able to stick it out for the long haul just to get an idea of if this is the right direction for you. So you want to make sure you can stick it out for that long. You also want to ask yourself similarly, can you create that much content in that time frame? Can you create content on the same topic for over 10 years? And that's only going to be something that you're passionate about. So make sure like picking the right niche, how niche can you go? You could go very deep down the rabbit hole, but you want to make sure you end up in the spot that you will enjoy the work because that will inspire you for more momentum. And then finally, is the concept proven? Now, in the case of Aaron Chase, the $5 dinners, there are food, like health, that is a very successful niche. And then you have the finance niche, the people saving money. So sometimes you put two successful niches together to create a sub niche and other times you look to see how can I tweak this a little bit? How can I go deeper down and just think about who your audience is, who are going to be the people who consume your content and focus on creating content for them. That's how we get the idea of the proven concept. These questions will help you a lot when it comes to crafting that niche. And one thing to note in the narrow niche is that, again, there's less competition, but also better engagement. So maybe you have a smaller reach potential. I mean, Girl Scouts, you cancel out a lot of people. There are a lot of people who it doesn't that blog doesn't make sense for. I'm not going to be someone who reads that blog. But you do create more engagement within the community. It's a matter of, do you want to have 10,000 email subscribers who are very engaged or 100,000 email subscribers that are not so engaged. And the more niche you go, you may not have as much of a reach potential, like a broad reach, but you do have that narrow reach and you do have that potential to get really solid engagement from the people in the community. Another big thing to note is that super niche audiences are more valuable for super niche offers. So sponsors that are within this very specific niche, those offers are going to convert better, which means you could charge higher rates since you have this more engaged audience. So there is a benefit from whether you want to have sponsors for a podcast or you create a book or a training course, or you create merchandise, you want to make sure that 
you understand who you are reaching out to with your offer and then create the offer or find an affiliate link or find a sponsor and introduce that to your audience because you do have to make money with your niche. A lot of people, they just go into a niche, but they don't think about the monetization model. If you think about the monetization, you are going to do very well as you build up. And finally, to cap off, hard and smart work always pays off. So in the short term, you may not get a lot of traction because you're just getting started out. You just have a small audience. For my podcast, Breakthrough Success, there was a lot of that time where it didn't gain that much momentum. But then in the long term, the momentum has built up dramatically and it continues building up to this day. So no matter how niche you go, there is someone out there who wants your knowledge, who wants your expertise, the experience you can provide. It's just a matter of getting really clear on who that type of person is, creating your brand around that person. And then as you keep putting in the work and you keep growing, you'll attract more of those types of people. Thank you, Mark. Wow, that was really nice. I actually made a note. I really enjoyed what you said about role models, and I hope those that were listening um, have a question or two on this topic, as I sure do. Um, yeah, those role models, something to think about, guys. So remember, if you have any questions for Mark, leave them in the comment section of wherever you're watching us. And if you just tuned in and you don't know what you're watching, you're watching Printful Threads, um, Printful's own online conference for e-commerce business owners. And while the next speaker is um, setting up, I'd like to share a reminder about the hashtag contest we have going on. So basically, we want you to share your thoughts, share an insight, share a takeaway from the conference so far, post it on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, or a public Facebook page with the hashtag Printful Threads at the end of it. And you just may be one of the lucky daily five winners to win a $10 Printful coupon that you can use on printful.com to order custom swag for yourself or you for, for your friend or your mom, I don't know. But anyway, we'll repeat the contest on day two and day three as well. So there's plenty of time for you to share what you've learned so far or what you will share, uh, what you will learn um, today, tomorrow, whenever. Alrighty, time to move on to our second speaker, Asaf from Wix. Asaf, are you ready? Welcome. Great to have you here. So basically the same drill as with Mark. Please tell us about, you, about yourself. Everything okay? Oh, wait, a uh, little technical glitch. Asaf, is your mic on? Should be okay now, right? Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Right. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, start from the top. Yep, I'll take it from the top. Uh, my name is Asaf. I'm the head of marketing for Wix Stores. I'm super excited to be here and uh, to talk e-commerce a little bit. Um, and uh, I think, uh, without further ado, shall we start in the presentation? Um, cool. So um, as I've said, this uh, my name is Asaf. I'm the head of marketing for Wix Stores. It's just the way it is. Uh, I love this. I, we get to work with a lot of merchants, more than 500,000. We learn a lot from them. And um, what I wanted to talk about today is uh, perhaps the biggest challenge when you start your business is how to sell to shoppers who have never heard of you. Um, so as Mark said, uh, there's a lot of niches there. Uh, the biggest problem you will have is that people never heard of you. They don't trust you. They don't know who you are and what you're selling. And it's going to be a challenge for you to sell to them. And um, so here's what we'll cover today. Um, we'll start with uh, really the basic and perhaps the most important thing, which is building trust with online shoppers. And from there, we'll go into uh, the marketing realms and finding new shoppers, increasing your sales, uh, which is what happens when you draw that traffic to your online store and then getting repeat shoppers, um, which we all love and cherish. That's where you get um, professional. That's where you get um, 
to, uh, you know, to sort of use all the tools that you will have gained in this uh, journey. And it's uh, it's not an easy journey, but it's definitely doable. Um, so let's start with uh, challenge number one, which is building trust online. This is, of course, a visual approximation of the problem. Shoppers don't know who you are. They don't know what your products, products are worth. Uh, and their attention span is very limited. So you have only one solution to change that once they get to your store, and it's to build trust. How do you do that? Uh, and again, everything that I'm saying here uh, has a lot behind it. So I'll try to run through it. We don't have uh, too much time. Each one of those things is its own chapter. And we have a lot of information and education about it in the Wix e-commerce school. Um, but here, let's start with the store design. The most important thing is to be very clear on why the shoppers are here and what they need to do. So uh, the best way to do it is to look at your online store on your mobile phone, which is where most of your shoppers will come from. Make sure that everything is there super clear. You have here an example, it's a desktop, but you know exactly uh, what this store is all about and uh, what button should you be clicking on. And that's obviously the shop now. Um, another way to build trust, and again, you have to use all of those things, is to use a lot of quality product images. Do it from all angles and show scale. So a great way to show scale is to put objects next to familiar objects, such as hands, cars, and phones. Those are the things that will help people understand what you're selling to them because as opposed to retail, they can't come and fill it out and sort of get a sense of what it is. They have to uh, visualize everything. So help them better understand with information and details. This is my favorite, is the About Us pages. This is something that a lot of merchants neglect and think this is like uh, just to cross it off their list. But I think it's an opportunity for you to tell your own story in your own words. Uh, people love when we understand why we do things and, and, and people love to shop at people that they can relate to. So show off your personality and obviously avoid generic content. Shoppers read right through it. and They don't care about the, the generic things. Also, be visual, show who you are. People will accept you and like you more when they know who the person is. Contact information, um, this is somewhat like the About pages, right? Let's make it easy for customers to be in touch. Uh, it builds trust, it shows them who you are, that you have an actual store if you have a brick and mortar one. Uh, social channels, phone, email, all those things will help shoppers understand who they're dealing with and how to get in touch with you. FAQ pages, another great way, write answers uh, for common questions in simple language. Make sure the information is accurate and up to date. You will have to update it every once in a while. This is typically done in the setup stages of your store, but be sure to visit it or revisit it every now and then. Um, so people you know, as get more catalogs and more products, more shipping regions, add everything there so have, they have the entire information. And this is also a good way for Google to recognize you as an authority on your field. Um, lastly, and this is very important in the world of e-commerce, is showing what other people are doing with your products, uh, which is building trust with social proof and testimonials. Customers just attract more customers, so showcase them using your products with images and videos uh, is even better. Be sure to do one thing, and that's use real testimonials and reviews. Do not fake them. Shoppers uh, can read right through it, and, and it really is the easiest way to lose that trust that you've been building throughout the previous steps. Um, for, so for more on this, you can search e-commerce school, build trust on Google, and watch the online course. We have a lot of materials on that uh, from you know top experts in this field. You can learn a lot, implement it, and sell more. Uh, so once you have the infrastructure to build trust quick with with shoppers, uh, you'll be dealing with the second challenge, which is finding new shoppers, how to drive traffic to your store. The solution here, as opposed uh, to before, now you're going to have to try out a few different things. Um, let's start with SEO. That's uh, search engine optimization. And that's all about helping Google answer a shopping intent query with product images and links directly to your product pages. Uh, 
in SEO, most of the, the work will be done at the store setup page. Uh, but, you know, much like the FAQ, you, you need to be sure to revisit it uh, with every new collection that you upload and make sure that everything uh, also applies to the new product that you're adding. You're going to have to customize the meta tags for store pages. So they're optimized for Google and the SERP. Uh, SERP is search engine results page. Uh, you'll need to create SEO patterns so uh, you can instantly update across all your stored product pages. And you will need to add structured data schema uh, so your business can appear as a rich snippet. And I put uh, something up there that you can see that if you put buy Misty Candles, which is one of my favorite products, you'll be uh, able to see those images and direct links. Right, uh, Google will present it right on your query. Um, another great way to find new shoppers is with online ads. Uh, and here you'll drive traffic directly to your product pages. Do not drive it to your home page. Um, this requires some budget. So you can start advertising almost everywhere with under $100. Uh, you'll typically do it on Facebook and Google. But you really have to know your platform in order to succeed. Google is more around the shopper's intent. Uh, for example, buy a toothpaste. And Facebook is more about triggering their interest through strong ad visuals, such as keep your teeth sparkling white and stuff like that. Um, again, it's not people are not there to shop, so you're going to have to trigger their interest. And it's a very important thing. You don't have to be perfect to start, just good enough. So start and always optimize. Find something that works. Keep digging there and, and improving it uh, until you get to be uh, ROI positive and then double down on your investment. A third way, which is very essential in today's e-commerce, is influencers. They can help you sell a lot overnight, uh, and you don't have to partner up with the Kardashians to, to succeed. You just need to find the right influencers in your niche. Uh, you can use tools like Buzzsumo or Free Instagram Influencers Finder, research and find local influencers. Um, when you do engage them, make sure you have a contract in place. Most of them have already done this. Uh, and they know how to monetize you. So be sure you're getting what you're paying for. Uh, if the results are good, uh, you can double down on the, the investments and there are platforms to do it. But you can also partner up with a, an agency that will help you do it, especially as you grow and you would want to work with more and more influencers, but you only have 24 hours a day and you will have to assign your focus elsewhere. Find an agency that will help you do it or somebody in your organization and, and you focus on the bigger place. But influencers, again, are great to, when you start, and they will uh, help you get flash sales, a lot of sales over a short period of time. Uh, all right, now that we know how to get the traffic to the store, let's talk about how to increase the sales. Again, this is a visual approximation. Uh, we want people adding stuff to the cart, but also paying for it. Uh, and the solution of how to do it, how to convert them, is to talk to them and motivate them with discounts. Um, so let's start with coupons. So I'm sure you're all familiar with coupons. We all love them. Uh, most stores use them regularly, uh, but especially to get shoppers to buy for the very first time. Um, there are a lot of coupons, but here are some very popular ones. So there's a percentage discount. For example, you can offer 15% off um, when people sign, uh, sign up for your updates. You can also create a price discount coupon, for example, $10 off or something. Again, it all depends on the product you sell, how profitable you are. And you can create a free shipping coupon. Um, this is great for the holidays. Many shoppers expect that. So um, you know, if they expect it, it's a great way to build trust if you answer their uh, expectations. Um, you can also use coupons to clear out uh, your entire inventory. Um, or to promote new arrivals. Just make sure that your e-commerce e platform uh, and, and the coupons are not case sensitive. You really don't want to frustrate shoppers who are getting close to that moment where they actually purchase. And um, yeah. All right, let's talk about chat for a second. Shoppers love attention. And from our data, we know that when you send them coupons, when you communicate with them, when you show them products, it really increases the conversion rate of your store. And uh, avoid this one common mistake. Chat takes a lot of resources. So make sure uh, you can handle the amount and the volume of people who are going to talk to you. 
because nobody likes to talk to those bots and nobody likes to wait a lot if they ask you a question. Abandoned cart recovery, uh, a very common practice in e-commerce. Uh, we're all familiar with those emails. They do tend to work a lot and uh, they're automatic. So put some time, invest into the copy, into the images, make sure it's triggered properly only for people who have abandoned their carts and um, proofread them, make sure the links work properly and design it to perfection, especially on mobile, because that's where most shoppers are gonna come from. <clears throat> Lastly, let's talk about repeat shoppers for a second. We don't have a lot of time, so I'll try to run through it. Uh, the challenge here, uh, and again, another great visual approximation is to get shoppers who have purchased the first time to come back for at least visit you one more time and you know hopefully buy more. Um, so email marketing is a great way. Um, let's run through it. One, build your list by offering a coupon for sign up to all site visitors and, and offer them the opt-in registration during the checkout. It's another, so, so you have them right when they land and when they check out. Second thing, use a business email so you can build your trust and your brand uh, to be more recognizable. The third thing is send emails really only when you have something to offer. For example, on holidays and when you have a special offer, uh, but stay close to the shopper's intent. Do not waste their time on meaningless emails. Uh, once you do that, start analyzing your performance and understand what worked marvelously and what failed miserably, and also understand why. So subject lines and uh, the timing, when did you send it? Was it 9 a.m.? Was it 9 p.m.? Those are always the usual suspects. And um, you can do it always, but especially uh, when you do something like email marketing, which can scale your business, talk to shoppers. Just ask them, what would they think? What would make them buy? What do they think about your emails? And how can you make them more relevant and enticing for them? Retargeting, um, another great way to bring repeat shoppers to your store. There are you'll have to do it with Facebook and Google and add a snippet to the right pages. So three popular examples for retargeting on e-commerce. One is recover abandoned cards, not through email or text, but through Facebook or Google. Another is product recommendations or cross sales. So find a related product to something that they purchased before and try to chase them and show them that you have uh, related products. And when you analyze your top shoppers, you can also offer them VIP discounts and deals, and everybody likes to feel special. So tap into that emotion. Um, there's one advanced tip here. Most of the people only use retargeting on the thank you page, which means only for shoppers who have actually placed the order and got to that thank you page. You can move the pixel up, which means instead of targeting only the people who have completed the purchase, target to the ones who have uh, added products to your cart. So your conversion rates will obviously fall, but you will increase your audience anywhere between 2x to 10x. Um, so you can, again, the conversion rates will fall, but total sales may, sc may skyrocket. All right, so uh, I think I've done a pretty good job in doing everything in about 14 minutes and 26 seconds. Uh, you thank sure you did. Everybody <laughs> for watching. Uh, I'm happy to connect on LinkedIn. Wix love merchants, and I'm happy to answer and take some questions um, after Katie. Thanks. Thanks, Asaf. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Uh, I hope you guys made notes. Um, if I had to take note of anything so far, what I really loved was that no matter how advanced e-commerce gets, there are some truths that will work likely always. So build trust through simple language and show real people doing real things with your brand and product. So that was a lovely presentation, Asaf. Really cool. You do have some questions coming in from our viewers, which are pretty exciting. And I hope you're all you're getting all pumped up for the Q&A session uh, later on. But it is true that we have one more speaker left and it's going to be uh, Kaylee talking to us about the wild wild west of e-commerce and how to find a niche there uh, which is well the topic for today essentially in this printful threads volume two day one um, so everybody watching please keep asking your questions they are super super interesting um, but before we get to that last speaker of the day. We are just about ready to take a quick five minute break. So don't go too far. So there's just enough time to grab a coffee or tea or maybe participate in our contest.
So you can post a learning from the conference, any little learning or takeaway on Twitter or Instagram or LinkedIn or a public Facebook page, um, add the hashtag Printful Threads on top of that, and you may be one of the lucky daily five winners to win a $10 Printful coupon you can use for cool Printful swag on our site. So please share your insights, share your thoughts. Uh, I think it'll be definitely worth your while. Okay. Break time. See you in a bit.
Break is over. We are back. If you're just tuning in, you're watching Printful Threads, Printful's very own online conference for e-commerce business owners. And this is the second installment already titled Marketing Crash Course for E-commerce Stores. My name is Marianne. I'm your host. You're going to be seeing quite a bit of me for the next um, three, three or so days, so sit tight. We had a great first half already with Mark and Asaf sharing their tips um, on how to find that niche, how to work your e-commerce business. And uh, before we head on to speaker number three, I wanted to remind you about some of the activities going on. First up, there's the Printful Threads contest, as you may have heard uh, me explaining already. So post a learning or anything else you'd like to share regarded, uh, related to the conference on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, or a public Facebook page, add the hashtag Printful Threads, and you may be one of the lucky winners to win a $10 Printful coupon you can use on the Printful site for ordering some cool merch for yourself or someone else, or I don't know, maybe just one spend $10 or something, who knows? Um, so that's that. We'll draw the winners randomly, of course, and we'll get in touch with the winners um, individually and privately. Um, we actually have some pretty cool learnings already coming in, and I think we're going to get them on the screen right now. Uh, one of those from all the T designs is actually something that I uh, made a note of myself that um, you shouldn't be afraid to look at your very small niches and consider combining them. Like it means it, it seems so evident and so obvious, but actually. I think it's something like a little tip that we may forget from time to time. So I agree, that's a really good one. And keep those coming. Keep those printful, printful threads, musings and ideas coming in. We're, we're enjoying them quite a bit. So please guys keep sharing and hey, you just might win a coupon for it. Okay, so I think recap is over. Coming up next is um, Kaylee and Kaylee's story. So if, if you have a question for her, Make sure to type it in the comment section of wherever you're watching us. And uh, yeah, just stay tuned for what's coming up next. Kaylee, are you ready? Let's have you here next to me. Yes, on hi. Oh, to Printful Threads, great to have you. Hello, thanks for having me. And uh, thank you to everyone who's participated so far. This is really cool. Uh, okay. My name is Kaylee, I'm the owner of KRAS, and I'm here to present Finding Your Niche in the Wild West of E-Commerce. So let's jump in, shall we? So, howdy. My name is Kaylee Day, and I have over 15 years of experience in graphic design, print media, illustration, and branding. In 2013, I opened up an Etsy shop called KRAS Art and Design. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Etsy and perhaps the classic side hustle, as they call it. Um, uh, in 2018, I quit my day job. Um, I was underpaid, undervalued. Uh, I was working for a business I didn't really have any passion for, and I just wanted to explore something new, something that sparked my own creativity. And today, um, as you will see, KRAS is one of the top online apparel brands in the Southwest. And so what is KRAS? KRAS is Retro Southwest Graphic Tees and Accessories for Women. Um, we specialize in graphic tees. And we are woman owned, obviously, started by me. And as of very recently, as now a family business, my husband is now on board. He helps me with shipping and fulfillment and things like that. We do original graphic tees and they are all designed by yours truly. We strive to be body positive and size inclusive. Our tees are unisex style and they all range from X small to 4XL. And we try to be inclusive to all women, including black women, women of color, non-binary, and the LGBTQ community. And last but not least, our tees are unisex, so men can wear them too. And just to jump in, here's some metrics from 2020. Um, as of very recently, we have almost 19,000 followers on Instagram. We have about 1,400 Facebook followers and growing. Uh, we get about 10,000 visitors a month via kres.com. And as of very recently, we've had over 10,000 sales on Etsy. So for kres.com, that puts us in the top 2% on Shopify. That's for stores that were started at the same time as us. And we are the top 1% on Etsy via stats on erank.com. In the beginning, as I said, we started on Etsy. I started it um, calling it KRES Art and Design. We sold, I mean, I sold a variety of things, uh, downloadable wall art mostly, little clay animals as you can see, little cute things that I just did in my free time, sometimes vintage clothing. Um, it was a classic side hustle. It was just kind of something I did for fun and to make a little extra cash. 
I didn't really have a direction or strategy. It was sort of just something I was having fun with and experimenting on. Um, and then as things evolved, I had what I like to call my yeehaw moment instead of my aha moment. And this is kind of where my niche was born. So I used my experience in apparel design from previous jobs to create KRAS. And so throughout my career, I worked at several different screen printing companies and apparel brand companies that specialized in apparel design, specifically t-shirt design. So I kind of already had that knowledge under my belt. And I used the skills that I had to harness a competitive advantage. I knew I wanted to design t-shirts, but I also knew that was kind of an oversaturated market and still sort of continues to be. So you really have to set yourself apart. And I knew that I had that design knowledge and specifically knowledge about how to design for t-shirts, both digital and screen print. So it kind of just became a natural uh, flow for me. And so as you can see, there's me looking goofy. <laughs> I'm an Arizona native. I love the Southwest. Um, and I also love kitschy souvenir style things. So kind of combining that all together created the niche of K-Rez, which is Southwest retro apparel. But obviously I had a problem. I had my niche, but I had very little startup capital. So how do you supply customers with products in various sizes without any inventory? And after doing a little bit of research, um, Printful came into the picture. I did some research on other print-on-demand companies, but Printful still continues to be the obvious choice for that. They are very easy to use. They're easy to integrate with uh, Etsy and Shopify. And after I integrated them, it was really easy and amazing to just design as much as I wanted. Um, I was able to expand my catalog so I could appeal to more customers. And so from there, I started becoming a brand. Uh, as K-Rose grows, branding and brand recognition became a big deal. I strive to put my logo and imagery on as much things as I can. I use my logo on inner tags for t-shirts, you know, as often as possible. So I, I would recommend tearaway tags if you're planning to do the same. Bella is obviously uh, the obvious choice for t-shirt brands. I love them. Love Bella. Um, I started with a very consistent logo and color scheme. You know, I haven't changed it or strayed from it too much. I love the pink and orange, as you can see, that's very much on brand for me. <laughs> and it kind of uh, elicits a Southwest sunset, in my opinion. And I would just say, you know, put your branding on everything, your products, your packaging, online profiles, consistency is key. And then from there, I created business accounts for Instagram and Facebook. I had originally started out with a personal Instagram account and then I delved into business. So it's kind of awkward having to go back through previous posts and delete my personal pictures, <laughs> but I did it. <laughs> and, you know, I post content regularly. I try to engage with my followers, you know, reply to comments and things like that. That's very important. And then as you probably saw from before, I tend to use we instead of I, like speaking as, you know, a bigger brand, you know, cause KRS has just sort of grown into something that's bigger than myself. Um, and then sales channels. I saw multiple sales channels, obviously Etsy and Shopify via krez.com. Um, I would always recommend this. You always want a backup plan just in case a certain sales channel doesn't work for you or doesn't sell well. Um, just always have different options for reaching more customers. Um, obviously, a personal website is essential. You don't always have to start out with one. As I said, I started out on Etsy, but I got a krez.com as soon as I could. Uh, you probably want to buy multiple addresses. I actually had a recent issue with a krez.net, which was not related to me at all. So I had to take care of that. Um, so as I said, I saw on Shopify and Etsy. And then I also recently started in on wholesale. I had people reach out to me wanting to sell krez at their boutiques. Um, so krez is now sold across the country in various boutiques and online stores. It's very cool. And those wholesale channels I use are Fair and Bulletin. And I also sell direct wholesale to people if they reach out to me directly. Um, in the beginning, I obviously didn't have a lot of money for advertising. I would use my early customers, fans, and friends as a way to get my brand name out there. Uh, the K-Raz Lady Army, as I like to call them, are my brand ambassadors. They're women who are my tees and post about them on social media. Um, when I first started creating a lady army, I would give them free or discounted products in exchange for a shout out on Instagram. And I would often use their pictures for product photos, you know, with permission, of course. Um, in addition to that, I do a lot of giveaways with similar brands that are kind of at the same level as me on Instagram. That helps get the word out to other customers to grow your Instagram follower account and just to 
get further brand recognition. And then I also do in the beginning, a lot of trade services, just, you know, pictures for pictures or likes for likes. Um, and then, you know, our photographers would want to take pictures of my products and in exchange, I would tag them, things like that. Um, but eventually moving into advertising, I realized that paid advertising is kind of the way to grow, go. It's sort of essential to keep growing your business. Um, as soon as I started turning a profit, I allocate around 25% to advertising, uh, sometimes more, just depending if it's seasonal. The uh, picture you see on the left there is that's my latest um, seasonal ad on Facebook and Instagram for the witching season or Halloween, which is coming up. I use Google ads. Um, I advertise on Facebook and Instagram. I also do a dedicated newsletter about twice a week. Um, and I usually offer coupons with incentives, you know, 10 to 15% off. Good copy is always important. I like to keep things funny and punny as I call it and always offer incentives like coupons. Um, and then I'm just constantly doing testing. I usually don't run an ad for more than two weeks because I really like to just hone in and see how it's doing and tweak things as necessary. Um, as for final thoughts, I would say as you grow, your time is your most valuable asset. If something is taking too long or really gives you a headache, don't do it. <laughs> find somebody that's better at doing it or find an app that can do it quicker or more efficiently. Uh, if you're only one person, you're always going to need help from somebody that might be friends or family. Um, treat your people well and they'll want to continue working with you. And also, as you grow, pay people when you can. Exposure is one thing, but if you have the money to pay people, then do it. If you can't pay, always trade for goods or services. Always credit where you can. I'm always trying to credit people on Instagram, prop them up. You know, I want to respect anybody who adds value to my business. And nothing is set in stone. As we've seen with this recent pandemic, you always have to be prepared to pivot. You always have to be prepared to change course and fix a problem that's coming at you head on. So be flexible because that's how your business is going to grow. Be yourself. Um, you have to love the products you sell. If you're not, if you don't love them, like what's the point, you know? And finally, thanks for coming to my thread talk. And feel free to use the code threads20 for 20% 20 off at krez.com. Thank you very much. Oh my God, thread stock. I love that. <laughs> I'm surprised everybody made that joke. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. And I just wanted to say very cool designs. I loved the, which one was it? I made a note of it as well. I break for critters. That's the one that just oh, yeah. got right in and there. It was very, very cool. And I completely agree with you on the awesomeness of Bella. I'm sporting a Bella myself. And it's very. Me too. Love Bella. Bella moment. Love it. <laughs> okay. Thank you once again, Kaylee. That was great. All righty, that was speaker number three of day one of Printful Threads volume two. And now it's time for um, our much awaited Q&A session because you guys have been sending us uh, a lot of interesting questions. So why don't we get everybody nice and cozy and back on the screen so I can see everybody's lovely faces. There they are. Hello once again. Hello. Okay. Everyone ready? Yes. Ready. Good. All right, let's see, who shall we start with? Okay, let's start with ASAF. Here's a question for you. Um, when you are limited by time and budget, what is the first marketing technique you have to implement? Well, you'll always be limited with either budget oh, or time. Um, so you're gonna have to make some tough choices. Um, there are things that will help you in the long run and but you can also reach out to micro influencers and offer them some of your goods it doesn't take a lot of time but you have to be very specific in what you're offering them and what you expect in return and try it out but in essence in e-commerce um, it's going to take effort it's going to take time and it's probably going to take at least a little bit of money to see some returns Mm. That's some hard to swallow pills there, <laughs> but yeah, that's 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 the truth of e-commerce. Okay, thanks for that. Let's try another one. Uh, here's one for Mark. Um, you were talking about role models, something that I found interesting myself. How do you go about picking one? How big 
or small should a role model be? How do you go somewhere between Kim Kardashian and your cousin? Yeah, I mean, that's a really great point. Uh, you don't want to pick someone who's too big because then you'll look at that person, you'll compare yourself to that person, and then you look at, you know, they get all these awesome traffic numbers, you don't get them at this time. And it's one of those things where a lot of people compare their chapter one with someone else's chapter 20. Like it takes a lot of time to build up. So I would suggest looking for a role model who is doing the same stuff as you or is doing similar line of work, but they're just a little bit ahead of you. So if you want to grow on YouTube and you have like 1000 subscribers, look for the person who is 5,000 subscribers. You could also look at the people who have 10,000, a hundred thousand, even a million subscribers, but you should be focusing on those people who are just at around your level, like a little bit above. So it does motivate you to go for more rather than looking at this like big time person and feeling like it's going to take forever to get there. That sounds pretty reasonable. Yeah. I could go with that. Yeah. Somebody who's on your level, but, but a bit, on top of you. Okay. Okay. I dig that. Um, here's one for Kaylee. This is a good one. How All right. to approach product, sorry, how to approach product pricing? Product that's pricing. Good. That's, that's been kind of an interesting question for me as I, as I went along. Um, I kind of took a very simplistic approach, uh, that it evolved into where I take the total cost of it, including like my time and the product itself, the base, uh, price of it and I doubled it. Um, and with that, I always included something like free shipping. Uh, so that kind of made it an easy way for me to just set my retail pricing right off the bat is just take your costs, double it. There you go. <laughs> retail price. <laughs> a bit of math, a bit of research. That sounds pretty good. Um, next question. This one's for Mark. Um, it's a pretty good one. How do you discover the number of surrounding niches? Like you had that example with uh, Girl Scouts. So how, how do you go about researching how many folks are in the Girl Scouts, for example, or who'd be interested in following that kind of content? So with the Girl Scout example, you could look to see like Google search to see like, are there any other Girl Scout blogs? Like I would do something really simple, like Girl Scout blog, Girl Scout YouTube channel. And then I would just find different channels, different blogs around that space. And then that would present a better idea. And there are going to be some that maybe they're just getting started out. Others that are a little more established, like the example I provided, but that's one of the best approaches. I use get an idea of what, type of concept is there and then you can look at the comments to see people who are engaging with that content mm -hmm. is there any like benchmark to watch out for i say it's different for each and that sometimes you don't even know specific benchmarks like some people are very public with their income figures and their traffic numbers other people aren't so i don't really do a benchmark in that uh sense mm -hmm. okay all right again research that's like the cornerstone of e-commerce okay yeah, um, yeah, i just uh, yeah. want to add one small thing here if for products rather for blogs so for e-commerce ask them like order a couple of products from that company that you're researching talk to their salespeople. when that package gets to your house talk to the delivery person and ask them the questions that you want to ask are they loaded with work does it happen like what's the quality of product how are they packaging things just ask and, and uh, you'll get a lot of information uh, from people in the supply chain. Oh, that's a, very, that's a very good tip. Thank you. Very nice. Actually, again, very straightforward. Just ask. That's brilliant. <laughs> uh, while you're here, Asaf, the next question is for you. Um, this one's from Patty on Facebook. Do you feel video testimonials are more effective than regular ones? What do you think? It's a great question. Uh, again, a lot has to do with the products and that niche that you're focusing on. In essence, video provides more information so people uh, can relate to that. I mean, there's a reason why YouTube is the second biggest search engine. Uh, we tend to relate to that. Uh, we, we need, it, it's harder to fake 
the videos than it is for images. So I think it does build more trust, but it does require more work from the user who is posting that. Um, so it, it's a bigger ask, but if you can have them do it, definitely. I would definitely put it on my store. Yeah, totally. makes sense. Again, makes perfect sense. You, your answers are so awesome. Um, here's one for Kaylee, which is actually kind of related to what Mark was talking about um, in terms of role models. Uh, Kaylee, what were your role models or still are? Um, I have a, a lot of different ones. Some were people that I, I still look up to that I see on Instagram. One would be Red Wolf PDX. Uh, they're kind of a local company out of Portland or the Pacific Northwest. Um, Wild Fox is another one. They're just kind of like a really big, cool, you know, California brand that I've always kind of liked their aesthetic. Um, who else? Life Clothing Company. They've got great products, great t-shirts, great branding. Um, yeah, those would just be a couple to start. I, I have a lot of people that I follow on Instagram that I really take great inspiration from and have a lot of respect for uh, that I'm constantly interacting with and a lot of local companies too. Um, Iconic Arizona is one. Um, yeah, a lot. And I can provide more information about that too if anybody uh, wants to know later as well. Awesome. And you can reach out to Kaylee for more details, I guess. That's really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. But yeah, I think that in terms of what you were saying, Instagram was pretty much made for that, wasn't it? Like uh, all that inspiration, all you have to do is do a bit of scrolling and you can mm -hmm. find what you're looking for. Um, and while we have you here, Kaylee, here's another, another little follow-up question um, regarding to what we were talking about um, videos just now. Have you used video in your marketing efforts and what's your experience with video? Uh, my experience with video is pretty limited so far. I did kind of break into a couple of videos on Etsy. They had um, beta testing for videos on products. Uh, and so I have done that for a couple of different ones on Etsy. You can probably see it. Uh, my Goddess Vibes tea, my Magic in Our Heart tea. If you go on the Etsy listings, they have video for that. Uh, and it was pretty easy to use. And I do like doing it. I think it does kind of give a different dimension to the product and kind of can see it in real time and how it fits a certain body type. I would like to experiment with that more, especially with different women's body types. So you can really see how a certain size fits. So that's something that I would definitely look out for in KRES in the future. A lot more video for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Let's see what else we got. Lots of interesting stuff here. Which one to pick? Which one to pick? Um, here's one for Mark. Uh, back to niches for a little bit. Um, so we were talking about combining several little niches, but how can you know whether they will sort of mix? Like there are combos that just don't mix. I don't know, fish and licorice or whatever, but how to, how to go about that combo? So for putting multiple niches together, I'd recommend just doing an experiment, testing it out, seeing if, if it doesn't make sense to you, then there's no reason to continue. But if it makes sense to you, then it's a matter of experimenting. And uh, it's not like a few weeks, that's not going to be good enough to get an answer. You want to stretch that out to at least three months. I'd like to do at least six months before making a determination. And you don't have to go super deep into it yet if you're not sure. But once you figure out, maybe you get some engagement, maybe you just get something really simple like a tweet or some type of comment, just like validated the idea, that's when you can then decide to build on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess you kind of have to wait for that as uh, Kaylee put it, yeehaw, yeehaw moment. <laughs> it wasn't a hobbit, it was yeah. yeehaw. Um, and that's actually my next question for, uh, for uh, Kaylee. How to keep your faith until you reach that moment? Because I think, well, we talked about, you know, you have to do a lot of research, you have to do what other people are doing, you have to search for that inspiration, but until that yeehaw moment arrives, you're a bit, so how to navigate that? Yeah, you're that? kind of just sort of, yeah, you're sort of lost in the woods. Um, for me, uh, you know, I had the good fortune of having a full-time job at the time where I was sort of in the experimentation phase of what I want to as to be. I realized that's not, you know, always possible for a lot of people that are first starting out. You might have uh, not as many resources or opportunities. So I would just say, 
take every little victory that you that you get and really just embrace it and get the good feelings from that to propel you forward into your next venture. Uh, you know, always keep trying, uh, always keep switching things up, maybe trying something a little different if it doesn't work out. Um, and yeah, just embrace the good moments because like that's what's going to keep you riding all the way to the top. Yeah, definitely. Um, Asaf, any recommendations? How to... Yeah. It's a lonely road, especially at the <laughs> beginning. So communicate. Um, there are great e-commerce community. Uh, talk to merchants, ask them how they did it, especially ones that are closer to you, either geographically or, you know, in the concept of where they're aiming to get business-wise. Um, make sure you ask the questions and, and build relationships because the network you'll be building will help you not only uh, in terms of like surviving through the murky waters uh, as you just getting started, but they will also help you scale as you're, bas as you're growing and they're growing, you'll have more options to do some co-marketing and some cross promotionals, other things. So you're actually investing a lot in your future by making that network. Yep. Networking, networking, networking. Speaking of strategies and networking and, and other things, here's an incoming question for Asaf. What's your favorite top best ever SEO strategy? Well, SEO has changed a lot through the years, so you have to stay up to date. Uh, it requires time and understanding. It's not an easy or a one-off thing. Uh, but it's definitely doable. So uh, what we do in Wix in general, we call it the EAT strategy, which means expertise, authority, and being trustworthy. Uh, it, it depends a lot on building a lot of content. Obviously, there's some technical SEO uh, that you can either do in platforms like Wix automatically or hire somebody to do it for you on other platforms. Um, but putting the technical things aside, you have to commit in terms of like providing good content, understanding what people are talking about, engaging them and knowing to tailor all your content around the things that you want to sell and provide added value always uh, for your users as they're um, always curious to know more about just the products themselves. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. Um, one more question for you, Asaf. There are really interesting ones coming in about uh, actually all the pillars of marketing. This one's about emails. Any recommendations for tools for developing aesthetically pleasing ones? Yeah, well, um, your e-commerce platform should offer you native email solution. If it, if it doesn't, then you should reconsider it because email is going to be one of your main uh, methods of communicating, especially to people who have already purchased once or at least sign up to get updates. Um, so, for example, uh, in Wix, you have the, you know, the newsletter builder where you get all the designs, you have the templates. It's also themed for holidays uh, and big, and obviously 2020 holiday season is going to be the biggest ever. And so you definitely want to build your, build up your list starting yesterday. And if you haven't started yesterday, then start now and, and start pumping out those beautiful newsletters as soon as possible. Definitely, yeah. Time waits for no man. Mm -hmm. And actually, our time is running out as well, which is a bit sad. But we have a question, one last question, and I'd like to address it to all of you guys. Um, and the question is, what's the one thing you would wish for Printful customers? Let's start with Mark. I would wish that we guys get out of this presentation of all of our presentations just decide what you're going to implement just figure out that one thing to start and then build up momentum the, if you could apply stuff you get from this whole conference that's going to be one of the best things you could do for yourself that's nice asaf um for me uh, i would go back into the research stages just ask your customers if you have them and if not then you know your target audience Try to get as much face time as you can with them, take notes, understand what they want, and come up with the right solutions for that. Thank you. And Kaylee, what would you say to your fellow printfulers? Um, I would say uh, if you're first starting out, start with the thing you love first, the thing that really inspires passion in you. Um, if you are the designer, I would recommend coming up with 
a lot of designs for your catalog first to really know how your brand is going to start to evolve. Um, and then just experiment and have fun and really just see what it settles into. A lot of times, the longer you do it, the more it becomes clear what you were meant to do. Have fun. Have fun. Have fun. Have fun. Ooh. Sorry about that. Wasn't that fun? Was it supposed to be? <laughs> That's a great way to end. I love it. <laughs> today. So I hope you enjoyed that little donor effect. Um, for, unfortunately, I can't see all the lovely speakers anymore, but if they are out there somewhere, I hope you guys are waving and saying a warm thank you, <laughs> a nice warm thank you to all our viewers. Yeah, well, that was expected. Little guy just died on me. But um, yeah, that <laughs> nicely wraps up day one of Printful Threads, <laughs> volume two. Nice to see the video team um, laughing nervously. Um, but other than that, I think it went pretty well. So thank you, Mark, Asaf, and Kaylee for um, all your questions and uh, for answering all the questions our viewers were sending in. Those are really insightful. And thank you to all you guys watching and sharing your insights and questions and being here with us. Like, it's, it's, it's an honor and it's a pleasure. Um, so I can't believe that day one is already over, went by in a flash, but we have two more exciting days ahead of us and uh, I already can't wait. So right now there's probably an agenda on the screen, I hope, yes. And you can see that tomorrow what we have uh, prepared for you is, um, well, marketing strate strategies in greater detail. What are the most effective ones? And then moving on, is gonna, it's gonna be all about scaling your business and creating meaningful campaigns. And then if you look at um, the agenda for tomorrow, you can see some of the exciting things that we have going on. So please, please um, check, uh, check back in with us tomorrow, same time, same place, 3 p.m. Eastern time, that's 3 p.m. ET, so come back to the, uh, where, wherever it was that you were watching us, maybe it was Facebook, maybe it was YouTube, it was perhaps our uh, landing page, Printful Threads, uh, printful.com slash Printful Threads, um, so yeah, just come back and then let's do it all over again, maybe without the mic thing at the end, but I hope you guys will forgive us for that. Um, okay, well, it's been a pleasure to have you here. Um, thank you, dear speakers. Thank you, viewers, and see you all tomorrow. <laughs>